this journal is just beautiful. What's up Polita Army, Doc Ito here, the doctor is in. Today we are doing an in-depth review and flip through of Doc Ito's, oh excuse me, Dr. Ito's journal. I got this from Amazon, link below, and I highly recommend it. It's a great way to support the movie, and it's full of awesome visuals, art, and really fleshes out the backstory of Dr. Ito, giving his thoughts in crucial parts of the movie, and also spending a significant amount of time even before the movie begins. Forbes mentioned merchandising as where the real profit margins will come for Alita. They think it'll be modest, but let's make it better than that as we fight for an Alita sequel. It has a little bit of a flex to it, just like a real journal. The quality of the materials is fantastic, and the paper feels nice. The cover is amazing. So I'm going to read some excerpts from it, and we'll flip through it real quick. To anyone new, remember to like and subscribe for Alita coverage, news, analysis, box office updates, and of course, free repairs. If you haven't seen the movie, spoiler alert, see that first, then come back. Dr. Ito writes, Alita is all that matters. After Sharen and I were forced to leave Zalem with our ailing daughter, we rebuilt our lives as best we could. I will not lie and say that I do not miss our old life, but now I must view the last of the great sky cities from below. There is something sinister about it, as well as beautiful. Perhaps it's the fact that nobody from down here can ever go up. It's a rule that's never broken. Today was one of Alita's good days. This morning she asked if she could add some more decoration to her wheelchair. She has a teenage girl's love for flowers and swirls and would decorate all her possessions with them if she could. We came up with a design that incorporates the letter A that we could use for the back and the wheels. I suddenly realized that the body we've been building is too plain. It doesn't reflect her vibrant, creative personality. Last night, I went to the Kansas bar to let the other hunter warriors know I joined the fold. There's a level of competition but the heroes share a rough camaraderie, and since I'd given a few of them free repairs at one point or another, my announcement was largely greeted with cheers. Alita is gone. No number of bounties will ever sate my need for vengeance. Shireen is gone. Her way of dealing with the loss of Alita is to double her efforts to get back to Zalem. I will never work as a tuner again. I cannot work for a sport that creates monsters. My hope is gone. I will continue my work in the clinic, but I no longer see the purpose of this journal. I have found something rare and precious. I have found hope. I salvaged a cyber core unlike anything I've ever come across in Iron City. Such a remarkable discovery in the most unremarkable of places. I was scanning the scrapyard for usable items for my clinic patients and had thought I would find nothing better than a corroded steel hand and a glass eye saved from a burnt metal skull. But then I saw her, half buried in a mountain of trash, the angelic face of a young woman, her eyes closed as if she was just sleeping. I knew she wasn't my Alita, she wasn't my daughter. But as I looked upon this wrecked cyber core, barely more than a head, spinal column, and heart, discarded like a child's doll that had been chewed by a stray dog, I knew that what she needed was the thing I tried so desperately to give my daughter, a new body, a new chance at life. She is alive. I brought her home. When I walked in, I saw a hunter-warrior swinging a chair at Alita, and I knew I was too far away to stop it. I was able to break things up, pushing people apart with my rocket hammer. I made it very clear that anyone who kept fighting would forfeit my goodwill, meaning no more free repairs. Then she drew a line in blood across each cheek, under each eye. She raised her eyes to Gruishka and gave him the kind of look you pray you never see as she stood icy still and stated as if reciting a lesson. I do not stand by in the presence of evil. And we do not stand by in the presence of evil. Hugo and I scrambled down into the underworld as quickly as we could. Frustrated that I couldn't move as quickly as the cyborgs, I blamed Hugo for inspiring Alita to be such a risk taker. But his assertion that I'd driven her to this held more truth than I'd like to admit. Alita leapt at Gruishka once again. Her evasive twist spin failed. And I can hardly bring myself to write this. The cutters caught her in the air like a scissoring bandsaw, 
tearing through her torso, severing one arm, slicing her in half at the waist, and detaching both legs. Alita fell in pieces, her shattered cyber machinery tumbling away from her torn body. I cradled what was left of her shattered form. Her hair was wet with cyber blood and I brushed it out of her eyes. It was my daughter's death all over again. It was almost too much to bear, but I refused to let my grief overwhelm me. Alita needed me. In that body, no one will dare harm her again. I reassured her that the berserker body is just a shell. It's not bad or good. What she does with it is up to her. I never completely stopped worrying about her, but I have to admit that for a little while there, I watched in breathless awe with the rest of the crowd as Alita took out seemingly non-stop attackers with lightning fast spins, kicks, and blocks. In all the years I'd been involved with the motorball, I'd never seen anything like it. There is only one way to get from the surface to the last Sky City alive, to become final champion at Motorball. If anyone has a shot at that, it's my battle angel, my Alita. So overall, the journal is awesome. You guys should definitely think about ordering it. Check out the link below. Remember to like and subscribe. Keep fighting for Alita. We do not stand by in the presence of evil. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. Doc out.